Hi everyone, this is a video recording of the experiment behind our Task for Assessment 2020. There are two parts to the assessment and both will be recorded. In part one, I'm going to take a measurement of the Earth's magnetic field in our lab by comparing it to the known field of a current carrying conductor. In part two, I'll use the measured magnetic field of the Earth to take measurements of the magnetic field of a solenoid. This is the setup for part one. We're going to use the deflection of a compass in the vicinity of a current carrying conductor to determine the magnetic field of the Earth. The current carrying conductor generates a B field that is perpendicular to the Earth's field. So the amount of deflection reveals the relative strength of the wire's field compared to the Earth at any given point. Since we know the strength of the conductor's field at any given point because of this equation, we can calculate the Earth's field at that point using the deflection of the compass. Here's an image of the equipment used on the day for part one. In this image, you can see that the red conducting wire is suspended in place by a wooden meter rule supported by a retort stand. If we take a quick tour through the materials for the experiment of task one, we'll see a power pack that's being operated at 12 volts. There's an A meter, and we're gonna be using the five amp scale for the A meter. There's a switch and a rheostat, which is going to help us control the amount of current going through the red wire. The red wire is held in place by sticky tape at the bottom and by the previously mentioned wooden rule at the top. We have a sheet of A3 paper with a line down the middle, a compass, and another rule for measuring distances. Prior to any current being passed, a sheet of A3 paper must be stuck down to the desk a line is drawn on the sheet and a compass is used to arrange the paper such that the arrow of the line points due north towards the wire. By doing this, we make sure that the field of the wire is perpendicular to the Earth's field at all points along that line. Once the paper is oriented correctly, we then need to measure off the distances along the line from the wire and mark them in. The final part of our preparations is to use the rheostat to choose a current to flow through the wire. In this experiment, I've adjusted the rheostat to give the maximum current possible that stays below the 5 amp safety cutoff feature from the power packs. In this experiment, we're going to use 4.2 amps. So now we're ready to take some readings. But before we do, let's quickly look at how the compass behaves when we turn the current in the wire on and off using the switch. Here we can see the compass being deflected in an anti-clockwise direction. Using our right hand curl rule, this confirms that the current is passing down the wire. If we look at the behavior of the compass further away from the wire, we see the deflection is reduced. This matches the expectation we have from the magnetic field strength equation, which tells us that the strength of the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance from the wire. Now that our equipment is ready and our preliminary observations have been made, we must place the compass at an opportune location and take some readings. We begin by marking the location of the compass so that we'll be able to measure the distance to the wire. We turn on the current in our wire and we take note of the deflection. From this view, it looks like 40 degrees. After recording the 40 degree reading on our deflection, the last thing we need to do is take a measurement from the wire to the pin that the needle of the compass rests upon. Looking at this image, that comes in at 5.4 centimetres. So, to sum up part one, we have a 40 degree deflection. We're at 5.4 centimetres from the wire, and the current flowing through the wire is 4.2 amps. Because the two fields are perpendicular, we can use a vector diagram, the magnetic field strength equation, and a little bit of trig to figure out the Earth's magnetic field. In part one, we made a reading for the magnitude of the Earth's magnetic field. 
In part two, it's time to use this reading to make a reading of the field of a solenoid at some distance from the solenoid. It should be stated, however, that this reading is a very limited one. We can't actually use the method described here to find the maximum strength of the solenoid field, but what we can and what we will do is make readings of the field at distances from the solenoid where it is comparable to the very weak field of the Earth. For this second part of the task, we'll compare the field of a solenoid to our measured field of the Earth. In the image you see here, there is a solenoid, which is a coil of conducting wire. There is a wooden meter rule passing through the solenoid and a compass resting on the meter rule. The coil, rule and compass are all oriented such that the rule is in line with the east-west dimension and that means that the fields from the coil will also be directed along the east-west dimension. In this image, north is towards the camera. Providing power to the experiment, we have a power pack at 12 volts, an A-meter to monitor current, a switch, and a rheostat to tune the current to a desirable level. In part two, like in part one, we use the rheostat to adjust the current to a desirable level. Beginning with the rheostat at its maximum resistance, we reduce the rheostat resistance, thereby increasing the current until we find a current that's desirable to use, but which maximizes the generated field from the coil. For this experiment, I've again chosen 4.2 amps to be the current that's flowing through the wire and through my coil. Now that we're set up for the second part of the task, and before we take our actual readings, it's useful to look at the behavior of the compass in general in this arrangement. As can be seen, when we place the compass at 10 centimetres, the compass is deflected through 90 degrees. This indicates that the field from the coil is towards the west, but little else can be determined. Because the deflection is 90 degrees, this means that the field from the solenoid is much greater than the Earth's field at this point. And so we can't actually make a measurement of the coil field magnitude anywhere where the deflection is 90 degrees. If we want to make a measure of the magnitude of the field from the coil, we've got to move our compass further away. As we move the compass further away from the coil, the field diminishes, and we begin to see deflections less than 90 degrees. For deflections less than 90 degrees, we use the same strategies from part one to make readings of the field magnitude from the coil. This time, however, we're comparing them to the previously measured Earth magnetic field from part one. Part two requires us not only to see the direction of the field from the solenoid, but also to make a measurement of its magnitude at some point. In order to make a measurement of the magnitude of the solenoid field, we have to select a distance from the coil far enough away that the field from the coil is diminished enough to be compared to the Earth's magnetic field. For this experiment, I've chosen to take my readings at 20 centimetres, and the deflection is 65 degrees. So, to sum up part two, and therefore the whole of our task, the deflection that we see is 65 degrees at a distance of 20 centimetres from the coil, while there is a current going through the coil of 4.2 amps. Using this information, we can find the magnitude of the field due to the solenoid at this point of 20 centimeters by building a vector diagram that incorporates the observed deflection of the compass and the value for the Earth's magnetic field that was found in part one. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at our task four experiment. These images that you're seeing now are just some more images I took from the compass as it moved further away from the solenoid you might find them interesting to find the magnetic field strength at these points.